Welcome back, Fido here, and today I will be dispelling a myth about Loser's Queue. I'll be showing you how a challenger player will win games at any rank regardless of teammates, and this will be the start of a series that I'd like to call the Fido Dailies. I'll be uploading one of these per day on different champions, and just giving you an insight, I guess, to my mindset and the way that I win games, because most of the time I win the game by just uh, juggling ideas, making the correct decisions. It's rarely through champion mastery itself. Uh, but I have heard you. Um, a lot of people have been asking for builds, so we'll start off with that in this game. Uh, we've got the page that I've used, which is Fleet, Overheal, Alacrity, Coop for AD Twist of Fate. I think the left page is very, very standard, and you should do it every single time. And the right hand side, uh, I went for Bone Plating and Overgrowth. Uh, you could also go for uh, the Sorcery page with Celerity and Nimbus Cloak uh, to just be able to pop your Ghost, pop your Flash, get that extra move speed, maybe trade Flashes with someone, still chase them up. But in this game in particular, if you're versing an Assassin in mid lane, I would highly recommend going for the green page uh, for, for Bone Plating. I think uh, it's really, really good against Assassins, and if you're up against a Mage, uh, you could uh, opt to go for second win here instead of Bone Plating. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the game. We started off with a little bit of a, an invade. We had uh, popped our Ghost to try and get Lee Sin's Flash. Unfortunately, we didn't have Nimbus Cloak, so we weren't able to catch up in time. And it was actually a wasted summoner here. I see Lee Sin started on Raptors, so my, my idea here is I actually want to pull the Raptors and make it reset. Uh, so that Lee Sin has to, uh, has to take longer to do the camp. Maybe my Volibear can 3 camp invade, but instead their bot lane is actually sitting in that bush. Um, right next to the, the red buff and I get punished. I now lose both summoners, uh, level one. So it's a horrific start. Uh, definitely not something you want to be doing. I think especially there, level one, as soon as I lost my ghost, you know, I shouldn't be trying to do any cheeky cheesy plays to put Lee Sin five seconds behind, you know, it's not worth my flash, but I go for it anyway. Um, I'm feeling a high. Before this game, I, I got like 20 kills in a solo queue game on Silas. So I just felt like the sky's the limit and I got punished very early. You can see, regardless of my summoners being gone, I know that Lee Sin cannot gank mid, right? He definitely did Raptors. He's going to do red buff. And then it doesn't make sense for him to gank mid before level 3, right? So I've got at least, at least till maybe 2.30. Because uh, I did actually delay him with what I did uh, with the walk-in. So I've got at least until 2.30, maybe even 2.40 before I have to worry about being ganked. But I do know he's going to come from this side. So I'm just happily hovering the top side of the lane. I'm also trying not to push too fast. I really wanted to 3-wave crash this because I felt like if I didn't get level 3 and Kiana got level 3, if the wave was in the middle, um, there was a chance that I could die. Now, because we can get ganked, this is the timer, like I said, 2.30, 2.40. Because we uh, delayed his clear, this is the timer we could get ganked from this angle. Volley protected us, but we could also get ganked from this angle. And we have no idea if Lee Sin's going to do 1, 2, 3, 4 into gank, or if he's going to do 1, 2, 3 into gank, or if he's going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into gank. You know, he could do any number of paths and catch us off guard. And by taking that tempo reset there, we basically just dodge his gank timer, get our regen back, we had no potion left, so we got a refillable, and it's slow pushing into us, so we don't lose too much. Just the two creeps there. Uh, so definitely, if you have a, some early game shenanigans, some crazy invades happening in your games, do that kind of reset. Just get a nice three-wave crash. Really be careful about two-wave crashing, because if you two-wave, you will never be able to reset. Three-wave crash into a base, and just reset the lane. You know, I, now I know that Lee Sin has to be topside, right? Because all his bot camps are down. The second respawn of the, of the, the side that the jungle started on is only at, at about four minutes. Uh, if, if they're a fast clear champ, in this case, because he was delayed, it'll be about 4, 415, maybe 420, uh, when this Raptor camp actually respawns. So until 420, um, I know for a fact that Lee Sin's top, he did end up ganking top, but even if we didn't see him. Now this is very important. When you guys have a freeze like this, against a melee champ, don't ever follow this, okay? Because this is the only way for him to break the freeze. If you walk into him, and he gets a nice chunk off on you, which is what he was looking for. So I'm being very patient. I know that I have no sumps. I want to keep this wave on my side of the map. Um, and I just want to try and deny him CS. And, you know, th there's no real way for me to, to win this lane anymore after what happened. Uh, so I've just accepted that and uh, playing for the small trades. Now, this is very frustrating for me. Um, because my Volibear tries to gank an ungankable lane. And actually, my lane was in a perfect state. You saw that I was frozen. I was full health. I was up resources. But now I've been chunked uh, by Lee Sin. And it's really, really bad for my lane. And my Volibear sees that the enemy mid is full HP and still pings to contest the scuttle. And I sort of start walking down towards it on autopilot. And I get really, really tilted because, uh, you know, it's my fault for not assessing the decision. 
and I just eat that chunk. And this chunk is really, really meaningful because now I'm actually within kill threat. You know, if I didn't take that chunk from Kiana, I could actually, uh, I could actually greed till the cannon wave and get a good base off. Uh, here, I got very lucky by my bone plating. This is what I'm talking about in the runes. This is why I take bone plating there. All three instances of the bone plating, so 90 damage proc there. I really deserve to die uh, for taking that chunk, but um, luckily I didn't. And just trying to keep myself uh, enticing here. I'm not entirely sure if Kiana flashed for that or not, so I'm really afraid of the Q flash from Kiana. Because if I do die in this wave, it's going to be slow pushing back into her, and it's not going to be a, a great position for me. And unfortunately, we, we actually don't get the kill, which is quite sad. Uh, very depressing for me that we don't get that kill. Um, I should have stayed for an extra order. I really wasn't sure about Kiana sums. And uh, we end up uh, we end up dying to the least in gank. Our wave is in a horrific position. This is probably the worst start you can have in a ranged versus melee matchup where you're supposed to be winning. You're supposed to have control, but now we're down XP. We have you know we we at least have our flash coming up, but really we're not in a good position relative to the rest of the map. You can see the enemy brand has a kill and like 50 CS at 6 minutes, you know, we have 36, so um, that's okay, you know, we stay strong, strong mental, here I'm just thinking, okay, I just need to hit my 6 and potentially look for a roam, top lane looks good, because obviously I've got great setup on top lane from Camille, bot lane's a little bit harder, uh, the Rakan can jump away, the Misfortune has cleanse, so realistically I just want to try and get some information on where Lee Sin is, I should have been probably hugging topside here because my Volibear is topside and I could have actually impacted this play, so I think this was a missed opportunity for me, I didn't use F keys at all, it doesn't look like it would have mattered and here I'm just tunneled on pushing the wave, I don't even see Rakan coming out and uh, I'm sure this was probably communicated by my bot lane, but when I got tilted by <laughs> the Volibear telling me to contest Scuttle, I actually full muted and this is something I would really recommend you not do. Try not to full mute in the game. If somebody's pissing you off, just mute that one person, like I did with the volley, but don't full mute because there was useful information that my bot lane, I have no doubt, pinged out that Rakan. And even if I didn't see him on the ward, I would have had, you know, previous warning, I would have paid more attention, devoted more of my mental stack to, you know, um, looking at that ward and maybe even lean topside knowing that Rakan's roaming. So that is the danger of full muting. Try not to do this, guys. This is a very bad habit. Um, if you have a problem with someone, just mute that one person, but let everybody else speak because for every one person that's inting the game, there's going to be, you know, two people that are trying to win, okay? And you got to give them a chance to communicate um, and help you uh, with information because you are a team after all, you know, everybody's trying to uh, play for the same goal. So here we've obviously got a push. I want to crash this wave. I see Lee Sin's coming in. I have to preemptively flash in case he was going to flash kick me there. Um, a little bit depressing for us. Now, I didn't actually ping out his ward, so I kind of forget about it, and then I'm walking up, and I realize, oh, I'm on a ward. That's a bit unfortunate, so, you know, mistakes happen. And this is a really, really good habit, guys. So if you're in a losing lane, and you have one creep like this, you might think, oh, like, this doesn't freeze the wave. But if we just don't last hit that creep, and we just let it kind of sit there, yes, it's still a slow push for us, but we've actually... We, we've made ourselves safe from the Kiana, right? Because right now, it's very dangerous to me. She has Serrated Dirk. It's a really bad time. I have no armor at all. I can easily die to a one-tap. So we just kind of keep the wave on our side. And then here, I'm just assuming that she's actually... Excuse me. She's actually roaming bot because she hasn't shown for such a long time. I look top for a play, and this would have been a perfect roam opportunity, but my Camille, uh, you know, lost 80% of her HP. And if I commit to that roam and I don't get anything from it, I just lose mid lane, so... It ended up being a little bit bad for us. Um, we made the wrong assumption. Kiana actually didn't roam. She based. And if she froze that wave, we would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, thankfully, she didn't. And here, like, you know that she's posturing really aggressively. You're going to lose a lot of HP for the cannon. Um, I really, really wanted the cannon, which I probably shouldn't. This probably wasn't worth it. Uh, I should have probably just dropped the cannon instead of losing three quarters of my health just because I've got no regen left. It is what it is. I think especially when you have a bad start, it's easy to fall into, you know, bad habits to get greedy for little things, like put overemphasize creeps, overemphasize the little things because you think, okay, if I don't, you know, get every single creep, how am I ever going to come back if I'm already behind? But this is the great thing about playing TF into Kiana. You've got that reveal. I played horrifically there. I just walked into the wall, which was like the most obvious, uh, <laughs> the most obvious, you know, play for her is to ult that wall, and then I thought that my way wouldn't get the kill, so I really wanted the shutdown. It's all just compensation, and these are decisions that I wouldn't make 
if I was having, <clears throat> excuse me, if I was having a good early game, it's a lot easier to stay composed. That's why those level ones, level twos, level threes matter. I always talk about in the, down in my review sessions. You know, you, you got to put a lot of emphasis on your first three levels because that dictates how the rest of your game will go. You know, that dictates what mental state you're going to be when the important decisions actually come in. And uh, if you're not in the right mental, if you're um, thinking about the past or trying to get too many little things here and there, like. You know, you make you make the the big errors, and that's what's going to cost you the game. So, basically, first three levels don't actually matter for the game, but they matter for your mental, and they can they can boom you real well. So we come back into lane. Uh, we're feeling pretty good now, um, even though we have no summoners. Uh, Kiana is a champion, uh, same as Zed or Fizz or I mean, pretty much every assassin mid. Like, if they don't have their ultimate, you're not really afraid of them. Like, sure, they can get a good trade on you. And here this was, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure why I have Sweeper to be honest, uh, but I walked towards the side of my Volley Bear and I guess I walked through Vision. I didn't walk backwards in a straight line like you should. So if you want to go forwards like that, just try and walk backwards in a straight line and then walk to the wall. And because Kiana kept tabs on me the whole time while I was walking, or maybe there was a ward in mid lane, I think she just saw me because I walked the shortest path. Lysium was able to track me, land the Q, and I basically died for very poor pathing. And uh, honestly, lack of a ward. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't ward before then when Kiana wasn't in lane because I had a sweeper. So uh, again, just a horrific early game. This is kind of games where people will go, oh, FF. You know, I'm losing. I have no way to impact the game. Uh, my teammates aren't playing too well either. Just go next. It's all good. Like I know what I did wrong. Level two, level three. You know, I'm not gonna walk into the jungle again and try to one v two contest the Lee Sin. That's it. Move on. Okay. But you, you, you guys can make. Um, you know, you can learn from that without actually losing LP. You don't have to give up just because you had a bad start. Um, because I think it's solo key, it's just all about your, you know, overarching ideas about the game. How do you play the lanes, lane assignments, uh, setting up objectives, trading. Like, that's what it's all about. So the other game is just kind of irrelevant. Um, here I see that we have three champions here, they have two. So even though this Rakan is coming out, we're kind of in a good formation. Like, we've got this 3v2 because Lee Sin is, uh, Lisa split off, so I'm playing really aggressive here. I want to continue this fight because I feel like we have the numbers, and I also feel like um, maybe Kiana doesn't have ult here because my ult's still not up. Maybe her ult's still down. I'm pretty sure it's a very long cooldown early game, but we just get the chunk, and you see that you know I'm not trying to greed for the kill. If we get the kill, that's great. Uh, but if we don't, I'm, I'm just playing for my lane here. I've got my ult coming up soon. I know that she's gonna feel safe, stealth under tower. Uh, so I'm just considering trying to keep her here. Uh, for when my ult's back up, and then we could consider uh, doing a dive here. So they overcommit, she forgets that I have ult, um, I ghost and get a nice kill. Finally I dodge the Kiana ult instead of walking into the wall. That's the nice thing uh, about taking ghost in this game. Uh, and here, my autos just do absolutely no damage. I think normally you'd be able to get that Rakan kill and run away. And it's a really good exchange for us. That's what you want. You know, when you're 0 and 4, you have nothing, nothing at all. It was the Camille that got the bounty, but that's the kind of stuff that we want. We want to trade 2 for 2. Even trades are winning for us because we're behind, okay? Because if you're down 10,000 to 9,000 gold, that's 10%, right? But if you're down 20,000 to 19,000, that's still a thousand difference, but now that's only 5%, you know? So, so the, the, the margin of how far you're down decreases the more gold that you get. Um, even if the, the, the gold lead remains the same, uh, like a thousand. So uh, that's pretty much our goal. Our goal is to try and take even trades, try and get a shutdown if we can. Um, and now we've got no ult. We know that uh, Kiana is pretty strong. She based on a good item. We went with Kraken Slayer this game. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the logic. I do think Static Shiv is an excellent item. Uh, I'll put the gold efficiency on the screen, but Static Shiv has about 122, I think, percent gold efficiency. And uh, Kraken's only 101. But Kraken just scales really well with your um, E, and also if you go Gwinsu's with Kraken, it makes you basically one-shot people with those two items. So what I would recommend is if you're playing against short-range champions, consider going Kraken Gwinsu. Okay, Kraken Gwinsu and then Rapid Fire, or maybe Kraken Rapid Fire and then Gwinsu. But you want those two items, Kraken Gwinsu, and then you basically become like an Arkshan. Like you just the way that Arkshan on stealths and one-shot someone with Q auto auto E auto. Um, you do that the same thing, except you can teleport right on top of them, so it's even easier. Here again, I'm just looking at the, the numbers, you know, I see there's two champs here, we have three, so I'm going for it. That's the only reason I'm here. Um, now there, I could have actually flashed on Lee Sin to stun him before he could take the Q, and that would have saved my teammate. And here I just kind of like executed horrifically. I could have definitely killed Kiana and flashed out, or I could have tried to kill MF first and then kill Kiana. 
it is what it is again. Um, not executing perfectly this game. A lot to be desired. But what's important is that we're not tilting. And we're not, you know, we're not rage splitting. We're just trying to play the game properly. My, my Kai says go mid. I'm going to go bot. Or I'm going to go top. You know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to let my ego uh, take over. In terms of if build, you can sell refillable and buy amp tome and nothing else, just don't do it, okay? Because uh, your biggest AP ratio is in your queue, and you have not even leveled that ability, okay? So on the ADTF, uh, the refill value is much higher than amp tome, in my opinion, and uh, it just lets you stay in lanes for a little bit longer. It also lets you get that overheal, right? Because if you can heal yourself up to full, uh, the D the D blade will give you an overheal, which is even more HP, right? Um, so I reckon stick with your refillable if you have the option. Now here, a lot of players would actually go to this dragon because the dragon is up. But one thing I want you guys to know is that if both teams have one dragon each, the second dragon is irrelevant. Okay, so if you're behind in gold, you should always give the second drake. Unless they're stacking three dragons, you should always give the second drake to get some gold on yourself. And here I know they don't have teleport on the brand, and I see that the brand is forced to actually come towards me. If I came here and we played a 5v5 fight, there's no way to win it. You know, we're down four, or 5,000 gold. But because I've forced the brand to come towards me, and then I immediately ulted out. So he's he's trying to kill me, but instead I've gone on his team. We've split them apart, okay, and we got a heap of gold for ourselves. Yes, we lost the dragon, but who cares, guys? Uh, they haven't stacked the dragons. Uh, we don't even know what soul it's going to be. It's all about getting the gold when you're coming back into the game. And I see that we can get this mid tower. They're out of position. All we need to be aware is that there's a brand here. And I even blue trinket for my teammates that there's a brand here. And I should have spam pinged on the way so that my teammates know that we should be going up. You know, not down. Go up, guys. If we go down, there is a Kiana that will get a massive ultimate in this terrain. And there's also how many champions? Let's count together. Two champions here. Uh, potentially three, I'm not sure if Rakan was dead before, but there's more champions here and there's less champions here. So whenever you're thinking, especially at Dragons, at Barons, which side should we turn to? Which side should we go? Okay, just choose the side where there's less people because you have a temporary, if we all go on the brand, we have a temporary 1v4 on the brand. It doesn't matter how fair he is, he's going to die in that 1v4 and we get a massive bounty. But if we go down, then we're basically using all of our abilities on you know, Kiana and Lee Sin, and this brand is going to come from behind, flank us. He's the one with all the damage. So, a rule of thumb, uh, if you're going to choose which side to turn, either turn towards your vision, or turn towards where there's less people, if you have kind of bad vision on both sides. That would be my my suggestion, but that's okay. Again, um, things happen. Uh, the most important thing is we did get the mid tower, and we got a nice shutdown just before the fight, right? We got like 700 gold shutdown, I think. Uh, so for our game, it's pretty good. We've got our win suits. So now we're actually in a position where we can ult on top of Misfortune. Um, if you look at, if you, if you ever play against AD carries and they have lethality, uh, you know, and you're playing AD Twist of Fate, you can pretty much always just ult on top of them and you'll win just, just by pressing S key and right-clicking them, you know? You, you'll win by standing still. I see that my teammates again are fighting. I'm not interested. Um, I know that the fed champions on the enemy team is Brand and Brand kind of outranges me. Now here, I actually thought that Kiana was top, so I just blindly walk into the tower. Um, I was trying to ping them away. I was trying to make them not take this fight because I actually have a lot of our gold. You can see that I'm the only person with two items com uh, completed. So if my teammates just press tab, they would know that, okay, we need to play around Twisted Fate. If our Twisted Fate is bot lane, then there's simply no fight top, right? Because that is the majority of our gold. We might be down 5,000 gold, right? But if I'm bot lane, then we're down like 10,000 gold. Um, so it's okay. Unfortunately, we die bot there uh, just, just because of a bad assumption, really, with no information. But the good thing is that we now have our ultimate. So we're already thinking about the next play. You know, the next play is to kill this Kiana. She has a nice shutdown and we can reveal a stealth. So we're not letting our mistakes phase us, you know? We just always think about the next decision. This ultimate was a little bit bad. I had to go a little bit closer to the wall there just so I can gold card her in case she flashes. That was a pretty obvious flash, right? The only way out for her. And unfortunately, my Hui actually kill steals the kill there, which is really bad for me because uh, I want the gold. I want to get my rapid five right now. I'm a little bit outranged by the brand. And when I do ult him, um, I notice the brand is kind of walking back in pick up a free kill and immediately you can see as soon as I get that kill I'm going back to the wave the first time I got the kill I run back to the wave the second time I get the kill I run back to the to the wave because I'm always just trying to get an objective that's what it's all about guys it's not about these kills the shutdowns it's all nice but it's all about this tower and the faster you get to this wave the more likely you can get this tower before you know your turn ends and somebody spawns and somebody can pick you off you know if I run here straight away I can grab the tower Unfortunately, because we turned around and, and went for Brand, right? That is the cost. If we didn't kill the Brand, this would have been our objective. We would have gotten a kill, gotten a turn, and taken the tower.
here, just greed for another wave. I saw that Rakan is kind of the only threat to me. Uh, this Misfortune shouldn't be able to beat me 1v1. Like I said, if it's a lethality AD carry, if you just flash on top of them and stand still, uh, guess what, you win. You know, here it was like 80% health on her versus 40% health on me. So I had pretty much half her health and I still beat her. Uh, that just comes down to, you know, just champion understanding, I guess. If you're a crit ADC, you just beat lethality champs. And immediately, you know, I'm done with that play. I'm not greeting for this because I could be, I could be punished. And I'm saying, guys, stop focusing on things that don't matter. This is a second dragon. Who gives a shit about this dragon? It doesn't give us anything. And again, I feel like my teammates don't understand that. They feel like they have vision. They want to take this fight. Why? Why don't we just take this bounty? Why don't we kill the brand? This is so much more gold for us. Who cares about this dragon? It's irrelevant. You know, we get the brand, we get the bounty, and we set up our top side. This is the next objective. Okay, so make sure you're not, just because you guys have, you know, wards or whatever in the area, just just try to cr think more critically, you know? What does your champion need to succeed? My champion needs items, my champion needs farm, my champion's good at hitting towers, we have two split push champions, both CC, like, whichever side lane we go to, whichever champion shows for them, Kiana or Brand, anybody will just die. So here I try to actually fake that I've left. So I stay out of vision, I go into this bush, the wave doesn't spot me, and I ping my Camille, I ask him to bait, because I know that Kiana will look for him. And we saw her walk in this direction, and I'm very, very patient. I am waiting for my ultimate to make sure that I can reveal her, uh, and we get a nice little kill, and we get another tower. So even though my teammates did not listen to my pings, you know, and they, and they opted for a fight on this side of the map, we're still making the most out of it, guys. Be confident in your decisions, and then you can make the most, even out of your teammates making bad decisions. Just stick to what you know is right. Here, it was a little bit unfortunate. I was kiting away from Lee Sin uh, because uh, he was coming at me from this way, but my teammates were actually... Like, I had to go through Lee Sin to go to my teammates. So it was a bit of an awkward situation. But they, they clean up the kills, and that's what matters. And here, again, my teammates are thinking, it's 3v2, let's start the Baron. Guess what? I've pressed tab. I see the enemy Brand has three items. He's an absolute... He's Thanos. Brand is literally Thanos, and my teammates are considering doing this Baron. And so I have to communicate, they're, they're not understanding the danger pings, so I try something else, you know, I, I ping cautious, okay, I ping the recall button. If you see that your team is not listening to your idea because they're, you know, emotional in the, in the moment, they, they're in the heat of the moment, they can't make the right decision, help them. You're in, you're in the fountain, you're in the death realm, you have nothing else to think about. Just, you know, try and contribute what you can through pings, through typing, uh, whatever, whatever you find easier. And there, I guarantee, if I didn't ping them, we would have all died, we would have immediately lost the Baron there. But even if you ping, this is what I want you guys to know, is that don't be discouraged. There, I did what I could. I pinged three different ways. I pinged the recall button, danger, fallback. They still didn't listen. And they still suicide. And it might feel... People might take that personally. They might think, oh, my teammates don't like me. Or, like, uh, these guys don't deserve to win. Like, they don't listen to me. It's fine. You can't make them, you know, you can't make them do the right call every single time. But I guarantee if you do the same thing that I did, then seven or eight out of 10 games, your team will listen and not die there, okay? Um, and you can see I'm not compensating. I'm not trying to go to the Baron 1v5. Okay, they're all topside. Let's get something bought. You know, I got a camp, I got the wave, making sure that they can't siege immediately on that mid wave. And here we're looking for a fast play bot, potentially if somebody overcommits. I'm telling my Kaiser, hey, uh, you've got a reveal on the Kiana stealth. Maybe you should come and help us out. Um, and we're just trying to stay away from them where the majority of their champs are, you know? This is a great play. We can see they're going to our top side. Just trade, guys. The best thing you could do against Baron is trade. Instead of just letting them siege and then trying to fight them, right? So we're trying to pick somebody off to delay their Baron. And uh, it ends up almost working out. Maybe working out. So here I actually just pressed A move on the wave. Uh, instead, I should have just done attack champions only and right clicked. And we would have definitely killed that Kiana. Um, I thought I just needed the blue card there, I did it for the damage because I wanted to one-shot her, I thought I'd only get one auto. Unfortunately we don't kill her. Um, oh here, this was a little bit... This is actually quite troll because I have a lot of damage on the towers, so if I survive here... Um, you gotta remember, like, we have so many tools to disengage, right? We got Volley Frontline, uh, we got uh, Camille, uh, we got, you know, uh, Kai'Sa Reveal. Like, if we're just all here and we're pushing, if I'm alive, we can actually threaten the end. So this was a huge mistake by me because now there's no threat of the end. And... Uh, I'm getting a little bit tilted because my three teammates are not pushing this tower. There's only one guy alive, and that is Misfortune in our base. The thing is, this is a 1v1, okay? And Misfortune sh really shouldn't be killing my Kai'Sa. My Kai'Sa can definitely hold the in him 1v1, but this Rakan can never kill any of us. We're 1v3. So if my team just commits to this inhib, we guarantee get this inhib. If we just hit the tower and ignore the Rakan, that's three, right? And the Kai'Sa, it's a 50-50. If she kills MF, great. If she doesn't kill MF, 
it's still the same result. We don't lose the inhib. Um, so again, a bit of a frustrating one where I feel like I know what to do, but I can't communicate it clearly enough to my team and we end up not getting as much as we should, or rather we, we lose the tower and we get nothing on the other side. But again, we just died bot side, rule of thumb, you die bot guys, you go top side, okay? Because you want to keep pressuring both sides in the map when you're playing split push champs, so if you have TP on mids, um, it's kind of the same concept. You have to start thinking about here, who is the threat on me? Who can actually kill me right now? You know, it's Kiana. How can Kiana kill me? She has to be in a bush and knock me into the wall. So I check one of the bushes uh, to make sure I'm not getting cheesed and I'm playing away from the threat. You can see that if Kiana's cheesing me here, I'm ready to react. You know, she has to run through an open field to actually get me. And I see that my teammates are fighting, but again, I'm just pinging them back. I know that my champion wants to split push. I am not good in front to back fights against so many assassins. You know, I am good, but we're, we're down 13 kills and a lot of gold. So I'm just pressuring, but make sure you try and hide your intent. So here I pushed, and I know the brand has to recall, because if he doesn't, I take his entire base. And I've got this massive fog period, you see, when, when he saw me last on the wave, and then when I appear on the tower, it's impossible for him to not base there. He has to base. So obviously I, uh, I, I recall myself to try and uh, conserve the tempo and pick up a kill, uh, an extra kill if we can. And we do. And this is really, really nice for us because we finally got our item, which is kind of game changing. Because they have so much damage, they have the brand damage, the Kiana damage, all these mixed different types of damages. And we've got a shield boy, it kind of answers everything. Now here was extremely frustrating. I actually pinged this bush. I pinged my Volibear to go into this bush as I was pinging the mid wave. Because I knew that the only way we could lose is if I get cheesed walking to this dragon. I quite literally pinged this bush. And my Volibear still walked the dragon and just put a pink cord down. Instead of escorting me, he walked to the dragon. You know, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes no matter how well you communicate, people won't listen and it will ruin your game. Like their bad decisions will ruin your game. But you can't let that affect you, okay? You just have to move on. You just have to think about the next play. The game's not over until your Nexus explodes, you know? And uh, at this point, it's a 50-50 game, you know? So uh, even if bad things happen, just look to the future here. I know that um, MF, for example, is top lane. So I'm actually considering, oh, this fight could be quite good here. If I can walk down here on old bot, this guy has no TP, we could have a potentially good fight, even though my teammates are dying here. Um, and I should have actually, I think, bot gone bot lane here and just looked uh, to pick Lee Sin off, maybe on the camps. Instead, I, I go top. My idea is that I want to ult on MF, the same thing as we did on, under the bot tier 1 tower. If I ult on her, I kill her. But I, I think I'm a little bit out of range, and my Camille is now walking with me, which is a bit a bit troll. You know, this guy's probably muted all his communications. What I should do here is I should base. I should base and go bot. This is the next objective. We need to pressure both sides. Like we said, we have two split push champs. Excuse me. We need to pressure both sides on the map. So this is a huge mistake for me. This is actually just ego, frustration from what happened here. Uh, kind of bleeding into my decision making. Like I said at the start of the game, it's very, very easy to let bad plays dictate your next plays. All right, it changes your mindset and makes you play worse. So here I should be bot. I should be defending this tower. I should be ulting on Kiana and just killing her. You know, I'm full items, full build. Um, we end up basing, trying to defend. And it, it, it's, it, the enemy MF just ends. She just walks in and dies. And that's really, really favorable for us. We know that we have the reveal for Kiana. So we just chase him down. And we try and space out. We, we value our life here. The Kiana ult is the biggest threat to us. So we try and stay out of range, not get Kiana ulted. And here, I'm not really sure what happened. I just misclicked my ult. But uh, uh, Kiana did die to Kai'Sa. Uh, the most important thing is that they had Brand, who is the majority of their gold, stuck top lane. Here, this guy just, again, this is compensation, guys. His whole team died. What should he do? Push out the waves. Not let us get any structures. You know, maybe cheese here. But cheese in a less vulnerable spot. What happens? Even if he kills me there, he still gets run down by my Camille and just gets traded one for one, right? So, it's just a very bad decision by Brand. Uh, compensation. Avoid doing that if you can. Your teammates make a mistake. Think about not how you can bring the game back to evens. You know, if one teammate died, you don't need to make it a 4v4. Just think about how do we lose the least? When they get a kill, the whole point of getting a kill is to get an objective, you know? So when when his four teammates died, he needs to think, okay, the next objective is, bra uh, is Baron. The enemy team will walk to Baron. My job is to protect the Baron. That's my only job. Stay alive, protect the Baron. Stay alive, protect my structures. Um, but anyway, same concept, you know? I am I see my teammates are going mid-bot, and I'm just going top because I'm playing a split push champ. And all I want to do now is I've bought, a, I've bought a Mercurial. So I know that if I just teleport on top of Brand with my ult, I can absolutely one-shot him. And I can just threaten the end of the game. And they have no teleports. So if my teammates can just group up mid, if they can just go four mid and just pressure mid, or maybe even four bot, honestly, either lane is fine. 
but I just need my teammates to group up and pressure on the map so that I feel safe walking out. Now for some reason enemy Rand walks mid, enemy Brand walks mid by himself, uh, gets Camille ulted. Uh, obviously we had a game plan to go on Brand, but this completely changes things. Uh, they're just making a huge mistake and we have to punish them for it. And this is what I talked about in the previous video as well, just you need to kind of invite the chain feed. So here I know that I could probably go top and get this tower while this whole thing is happening mid. But if, if we just get one or two more kills, we can potentially end the game. So I really want to prolong this. The two biggest threats, Brand and MF, are down. And uh, I want to make sure this fight still goes on. I have QSS. Uh, I know that very likely Kiana will try and set up for the Rakan stun or for Lee Sin Kick if she still had it uh, with, with, her, with her blue Q, white Q. Um, and we end up uh, QSS flashing it and we just end the game here. So this... This concept of forcing chain feeds is a really good uh, way to win any game, any solo kick game. You see somebody made a mistake, you need to make yourself enticing to continue the fight. Like you can see that the numbers are just against them, you know, it's a 3v4 um, or 3v5 even. And you just need to put yourself in a bad position, let them engage on you, uh, pick up the rest of the kills and just end the game. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe on my YouTube and I have a coaching Discord, feel free to jump in. I post matchup spreadsheets, tier lists, uh, just generic advice, there's channels for every champion including TF, so if you have any questions hop into the Discord and uh, I'd love for you to get involved.